y'all, it's Bedrocks Part 2. Remember, all the credit for the original type study goes to Bob County. Make sure you go visit his website. If you haven't bought, watched Part 1, go ahead and go back and do that, and this will make more sense. Or if you just want to roll through it, that's fine too. This is a Type 1 Bedrock right here, and one of the telltale signs is the fact that at one time it had two patent dates, and of course the second one has actually been filed away or removed. But let's talk about that first one. That first one that is still there is, of course, from 1895, and that is this patent right here. This by Justice Trout. And this is the basic bedrock design right here that shows 100% contact between the frog and the base of the plane or the sole of the plane. So that's really what the heart of the bedrock is all about, and that's Justice Trout's design. But I do think that it's worth mentioning that in addition to the frog contact there, you see this little design right here, and this is a blow-up of that. And I don't know about y'all, but that looks like an eccentric lever to me. Same design, right? Or eccentric plate like you see on the block planes. But imagine this eccentric plate but with a long stem out of there. And so that looks to me like it was designed to be able to actually make fine adjustments on the frog. So not the lateral adjust because it's not for the blade, it's for the frog itself. But, of course, we now know that that didn't actually make it to production. But what did make it was that 100% contact between the frog and the bed of the plane. And just as a point of comparison, here is a Stanley Bailey pattern from the same time frame. This is actually a cantilever style frog, so it's not even making contact up here on this leading edge with the sole of the plane. Whereas with the bedrock, you know, and I don't even have the screws in there, but that one you don't get the lateral movement there. And now let's talk about that second patent date, the one that got filed off. That one actually was to a gentleman by the name of Edmund Shade. And that is this patent right here. So you see September 3rd, 1895. It's been determined this was the patent date that was removed. And you can see this one's got a couple different things. It's got this different style of lever cap. So it's like a two part with a screw that holds it down in addition to the lever here. We know that this did not actually make it to production, but what did was this frog adjusting screw right here. And you can actually look these up on Google. You can go to Google Patents and you can look it up. And if you guys want the link or whatever, just let me know and I can add it to the description. But I printed this out just so I can get educated on it myself. But the main takeaway here is the frog adjustment screw is what made it to the plane. But the patent date, you know, once the lawyers got involved, they had to go ahead and remove that. And incidentally, this was removed after the Japanning. And just in case you're not familiar, frog adjustment screw, which I imagine 99% of the people watching this are, but it connects to this plate or or fork right here and that's what allows you to make fine adjustments and move the frog you know forward and aft as far as the timeline on this goes we know that these patents were issued in both in 1895 and what we know about the bedrocks is they went into production in 1898 and then they were actually first introduced for sale the first time we see them in a catalog was in 1900 and that's in this one right here catalog number 26 this is of course a reprint stanley rule and level company but right here you see the first time that we see bedrocks advertised and then you're pointing out the adjusting screw there so pretty cool stuff now look at that two dollars and ninety cents for a 605 before we move on from this type one, let's talk part stuff real quick and compatibility. So as a part supplier for parts all over the world, this is pretty important stuff. You'll notice that this is a slightly different width. So these early screws were actually smaller and this plate was actually smaller because for example, here's a later screw and you can see that that does not fit in there. So when you're out there shopping or when you contact me or whoever else you buy parts from, just make sure if you're shopping for an early bedrock that you get that compatible screw and plate. And the early ones, again, were a smaller diameter. And in that same vein, the 603 specifically, even the later ones, it's the flat side 603, they take a smaller plate as well. And I'm talking overall width is smaller on that. So that's an important little factoid. And look, see that doesn't even line up. You can't, you wouldn't even be able to put a screw in there. So you need one of these small ones, and that is important to know as well when you're shopping for 603 parts. 
And last and most certainly not least, the beaded knobs. If you're familiar with the Stanley Bailey pattern, you know that the early ones had a beaded knob up through, what was it, Type 5? That is not the case, because remember the bedrocks didn't come along until the equivalent of Type 7 for the Bailey pattern. And that means that the beaded knobs had already gone out of style. So even a Type 1 bedrock is still not going to have a beaded knob. And one more note on compatibility. I've covered this in another video here and there, but just in case it's your first time seeing it, the easiest way to tell the frog apart between a round side and a flat side is just look at the bottom of the frog. If it's got this rounded area right here, then it goes to a round side bedrock. And if it's flat along the back or straight, then it goes to a flat side bedrock. Important stuff to know when you're out there shopping for parts. Here's another fun fact. When we look at the Bailey pattern, which is this one right here, compared to the bedrock, so in 1907, roughly, they added the frog adjustment screw. So this is a Type 10 right here. They added the frog adjustment screw to the Bailey pattern. Well, now you don't necessarily have a way to really easily tell the Bailey apart from the bedrock. And there's speculation out there that that was one of the reasons why they went to the square side to update that in order to give the bedrock its own unique look. This next part is pretty interesting too. This is a Stanley Bailey pattern again. You'll notice April 19th of 1910. And then the bedrock pattern, which is now a flat side, also April 19th, 1910. So of course, at first glance, you would think that's probably the same pattern, right? Well, it turns out it's not the same pattern. Our guy Edmund Shade is back again. Same dude with the, the adjusting screw for the frog. And he's actually issued two patents back to back looking sequential numbers 556 and 557 and both of them are very very similar but one is for the bedrock and then the other one is for the bailey pattern and kind of the crux of both of these pertains to that adjustment screw again so that frog adjustment screw we're revisiting that here's the bedrock one and you can see where it shows the two screws on the side for adjusting the frog and then that frog adjustment screw and that forked plate there in the center. And you see the little side diagram and everything. But this one goes into detail and it talks about, you know, it relates to improvements in planes. The main object being to provide superior adjusting means. That's going to go through and talk about how you would adjust the frog on a bedrock. And this one pertains to the Bailey pattern. And so in the drawing, you can see where it's got the opening in the center of the frog there right there and it does not have the two screws so sequential patent dates or sequential patent numbers excuse me issued on the same date and both of them pertain to uh, the adjustment of the frog and proper positioning and that's your little bit of nerd out trivia there for the stanley rule and level company for the bailey pattern and for the bedrock pattern as a side note Stanley, their Stanley Rule and Level Company was not alone in this endeavor. And this right here is Sargent's answer to the bedrock, or at least their attempted answer. And this is what's called a Shaw's patent. And you can see it's got screws back here. And I'm going to tell you all the truth this thing is a pain in the butt. You cannot access these screws easily. Bedrock, far superior design, as far as I'm concerned. But you can see it's got the frog adjustment screw there. So you loosen those up, adjust that. And incidentally, if anybody has a secret or a trick for how to access those, I got one of these that's stuck and I haven't been able to get it out yet. But yeah, Shaw's patent, that's Sargent's answer to the bedrock. For those of you who did watch the first video, I got to make a correction here. I talked in the first video about the Type 7s having Japanning in the background behind the Stanley there. I talked to a longtime collector and somebody who owns a lot of numbers, I mean uh, Type 7s, and he said that he does not think that's correct. So I was thinking they were Japan, kind of like what we saw in the early ones. Um, he says that is not correct. So I'm still looking to hear from more people, but I do tend to believe him because, you know, he's, he's been collecting these a long time. So I stand corrected on that. Probably not Japaning on the, behind the Stanley on those Type 7s. And speaking of making corrections and dispelling myths, if you read up on bedrocks, you're trying to learn all you can about them, you're going to hear or you're going to read that there was never a 601 made. Uh, while it's true that the Stanley Rule and Level Company never made a 601, Patrick Leach or Pat Leach of you know www.supertool.com, you've heard me talk about that before, 
he did actually have a bunch of 601s made, you know, kind of an aftermarket endeavor. And so they are out there. If you're into Bedrocks and you want to have the full lineup and you've got the money, the 601s do exist. And then there's a very select few of us who are fortunate enough to own one of these little guys right here. And that's from Corinth Tool Works. But you got to be really cool to have one of those. If you want to own a bedrock and you don't want to spend bedrock money, there are Winchesters and Keen Cutters out there. You're looking for, unfortunately I don't have a body to show you, but you're looking for one that says K and the number. So like K4, K7, etc. Or W, just a single W. But stay away from the KK because those are made by Keen Cutter and those are not what you want. But the telltale sign on that is going to be that twisted lateral. So what they did was Stanley made, under contract, they made some bedrock style planes for keen cutter and for winchester and they are in the type four variety of the type four variety but that is a keen cutter frog and you can see that it mates up no problem to a 604 sole and again if you want to have a bedrock but you don't want to spend bedrock money that is an option just look for the single k or or the w series from our references, of course, Roger K. Smith, P. Tampia, got volume one over here, got volume two right here. I talked about this, you know, catalog 26, and then I do have a select number of these catalog 34s. These are really, really good to have, especially the kind of the older, the better, to give you some more information. So this is going to cover the sweethearts. And then specifically, you know, type study, which was adapted by Roger K. Smith. But remember, the original type study, Bob County gets all the credit for that. So kudos to Bob. Please do go visit his website. And most of all, thanks for watching.